Leadership is an activity, and a, an activity of mobilizing, of engaging people to make progress, to make improvement. In this definition, leadership is not seen as a position. It's not about being a president, it's not about uh, being a director, it's not about being a head of the department. It's about activity. So we can exercise leadership in any, any uh, uh, space in the community, on the top, on the bottom, with formal authority, without formal authority. And, and if, we, if we take the, the, the definition, and if we understand leadership that way, we will see that among us, in many different cities, in small villages, and bigger cities, there are a lot of leader, uh, leaders and a lot of people that exist in leadership. However we define the community, it could be an organization, it could be a society, it could be a country. Uh, and uh, leadership will look, like, uh, will, uh, look differently uh, in different communities and different organizations because context will matter. Uh, leadership is uh, something different, maybe something different in a different context. In some context, uh, you have to uh, be very engaging and you have to seek out to people and listen to them and sometimes you have to take a very uh, fast and harsh action. So I can't really t say in, in abstract what leadership is about, uh, all about, about in a, in a given community of practice because it is uh, problem dependent. So first of all, one of the most important uh, skills uh, for a person that wants to uh, exercise leadership is a skill of a, of, um, of a good diagnosis. You know, to diagnose the problem. What's really the problem? What's really the issue that the community or the organization is facing? One of the most important, a single uh, most frequent mistakes in leadership is a diagnostic mistake. We want to solve something, but we actually, and we take action before we really understand what the problem is. Uh, and I think it's very important for people that want to exercise leadership really to expand their abilities to, to analyze problems, to analyze the context, to analyze uh, the issues that are facing, that, that the certain communities face. Once you analyze that, and once you, once you develop your diagnostic uh, skills, uh, of course there's a whole uh, lot of uh, skills that you can use to take action and those skills range from you know uh, building coalitions how do you build coalitions how do you engage people from other factions not only from minor factions but other factions to take them together and so and work on on a problem how do I pace my my work how fast should I go how fast should I um, implement certain things uh, so that I do not create too much stress and in, a, in a given community. Uh, also, things like, you know, uh, selling your idea. Just go to, you know, somebody that is not interested in your idea, it's not interested in the problem that you want to solve and to really uh, focus the attention of those people on that problem. It's a very, very important skill. Developing this capacity to diagnose, as I said, is very, very important. And where you can learn? First of all, you have, to, you have to understand how important it is. Uh, this is the first step. And then you learn quite often uh, in the, uh, by engaging other people that have made mistakes, that failed uh, in doing whatever they were doing, and by creating a space for those people to exchange and share that experience. I find that the, one of the most important sources of learning for people that want to that want to exercise leadership is to talk about their failures, to talk to look at the at the uh, at their actions in the past, to look uh, at what they were trying to achieve in the past and they failed, and that they sit together and and re-examine uh, those failures in the context of leadership and share that information and share that knowledge. And of course, there is a lot of uh, theoretical concepts about that, so it's good to uh, engage experts and, and people that, that spent years uh, trying to understand what's the best way to, you know, uh, diagnosing uh, problems. First, you have to focus the attention of people on the problem. Because people, you know, uh, have all sorts of issues out there in the world. 
all sorts of problems out there in the world that are waiting to be solved. Uh, and to mobilize people, you have to first draw their attention to it. So communication skills are very, very important. So the way you talk to people, the way you talk about what you're trying to achieve, uh, the certain way of you know, convincing people that the problem that you are trying to solve is very, very important, not only for you, not only for the community, but also for the people that you are trying to engage. So the communication skills uh, are very important. Then the organizing skills, because some, some, uh, some, uh, quite often people want to solve problems by themselves only. So, so here I am, here's the problem, and I'm going to take everything on my burden, on my, on my shoulders, and I take all this burden on my shoulders and then I'm going to solve it myself only. But you have to be able also to, be, to organize people so that you not only you but also other people work. So how do you do that? How do you organize small groups of people? How do you connect these small, small, uh, small groups of people so they work themselves on the problem not only you? So this is the second uh, skill, the organizing skill. Um, also, I, I think uh, that one of the important, perhaps not skills, but the attitude that you should do is to, to really answer the question for yourself, what really drives you? What is your internal motivation to do things? So why are you actually doing what you're doing? Because if you find that in yourself somehow, uh, then you will see that it's much easier for you uh, to go through the motions in some ways, to exercise, to, to take all of these actions despite difficulties. There are a lot of people that want to solve and you know, improve things uh, out in the world, but then when they encounter a barrier, when they encounter a resistance from people, they stop. And those people precisely don't solve them, don't solve their problems. So you have to have some inner motivation and it's important for you to understand what it is what is really that you're passionate about because this is an engine for you uh, in, a, in the process of exercising leadership. I really want to draw the, the attention to your attitude, to what's in your heart in some ways. That's so crucial. Imagine that you know all of the skills of active listening. So you know that you have to look into the eyes of the person, that you have to ask questions, that you have to nod your head, okay? But does it guarantee that you're going to listen to that, that person? No. You can use all of these tricks, but the person in front of you will see that you're actually not listening. But imagine now that you really care for that person, that you really care for the problem that this person is sharing, that you really care about that problem and you want to help to solve that problem, that you don't need all of the skills. You know, active listening will show up by itself, you know, show up through your attitude. Then, of course, it's important to be strategic, okay? So, important to learn things like, you know, it's, it's you know, to talk about uh, what's interested, uh, what, what, what is the interest of people so that you can connect. Uh, it is also important to listen to people so that you can understand what their problems really are. And when you speak, you don't only speak about your own ideas, but you can somehow connect to what they really feel is important. Um, and, oh, and, and many, many, many uh, other things probably. But uh, I would emphasize the attitude and motivation, uh, which is crucial. Leadership uh, changes with the context. And today we live in an interdependent world. We don't live in a world where there is one person uh, or as even group of people uh, that can exercise power and then exercise authority over everyone. Today we have also uh, 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 we live in a world where we have access to many different sorts of information, uh, and a world that is largely democratized. What does leadership look like in that context? I think that in that context, leadership does not involve a single person that has the answer to all of the problems, because the world is too complex for that. Leadership today, I think, and in the future, more increasingly so, will be a process of engaging people, creating a space for people for conversations. Today, conversation among different factions of people, even the conversation between different groups of society, so different groups of, of communities, is difficult. So creating a space for this conversation is important. And then 
focusing people on critical questions. You know, what, what is the problem? How can we actually improve our, you know, community? What is the, the problems and the challenges that our country faces? You know, this is, this is probably something that will be increasingly more important uh, in the process of leadership. In the past, maybe we had some more uh, capability, uh, possibility to engage small groups of people or, you know, exercise certain actions individually. But in this world, it becomes more and more difficult and, and we really have to learn uh, to create a process and a space for people to engage and, uh, and ask questions instead of giving uh, ready uh, solutions. So leadership is about practice um, and it's a craft, it's a profession in some ways. So of course uh, the most important learning for, for you is the learning by doing. Uh, An important learning for you is also uh, communities of practice where you meet other people seeking exercise leadership and you share your experience. That's very important. But books are also very important because books can provide you with a certain framework. Books can also help you understand your past mistakes uh, and explain uh, what you did that maybe contribute to mistake or also uh, may help you understand why you're so successful in what you're doing. So I think you, we need both. Uh, we need uh, the process of being there in the action, getting practice, getting experience through, learn, through doing things. But we also have, have, have to have the ability to be on the balcony in some ways, spend some time with books, spend time uh, uh, some, sometimes with you know, reading about the theory of leadership because this is also very, very useful. For example, something that you might not understand yourself very quickly is how uh, groups of people um, react to a new intervention. So you, you're doing a certain intervention and this creates some quite often a disequilibrium in a, in, in a community. How do you deal with that disequilibrium? It's a very, very uh, uh, difficult task. And there are, group, uh, there are books that actually you know, provide you with, uh, with answers. You know, that, you know, uh, how do you pace? things, what kind of interventions uh, can actually raise the uh, disequilibrium, what kind of interventions can lower the disequilibrium. This is a, a critical knowledge that you can also read in the books. There are thousands of books out there, but I think uh, for people that want, uh, that need some practical approach and that is uh, combined in some ways with a little bit of theory, a, a very good book is the book called Practice of Adaptive Leadership. That's, that's an important book because this book uh, provides a reader with a, a, a really useful and a really uh, consistent framework uh, of theory of leadership, but at the same time provides a whole, uh, a, a lot of different skills and uh, a, a lot of different uh, practical uh, advice uh, that can be readily taken uh, by by a reader and and, and uh, to implement uh, in the action the next day. If we are really committed to making the world a better place, I think we should also be committed to our self development, because because we can we will do more good in the world if we ourselves are better. If we are ourselves better in morally and ethically, which is very important, but also if we ourselves are better in terms of our professional skills. So I would certainly advise, if you have an opportunity, go and attend or, or, um, or take part in the course of leadership, do so. And there are probably courses that are better than others, uh, but any course is useful. Uh, I myself have a practice, even though I have already experienced and I work as, at the university myself, that at least, you know, that every year I will go to a workshop or to a course myself you know, once or twice a year. Just to, just to see what's there, to meet people uh, also that are trying to change the world for the better. So go study and make it as part of your commitment to making the world a better place. So I think it's very important for people that want to exercise leadership, that they have a community of other people wanting to exercise leadership. And, and there's a particular reason for it. Because leadership, if we understand it well, we don't have so much time to talk about it, is a risky exercise. 
Sometimes when you want to change the reality, you have to ask people to make difficult choices. You have to ask people to reevaluate their values. You have to ask people to do other things that they've been doing. And quite often people resist that. And quite often it's difficult for people. And yet for the community that they're dealing with, uh, that change is very, very important to make the community thrive. And so you need a, 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 a sanctuary. You need a, a quiet place. You need a secure, a safe place where you can you know, meet people that share your passion, that have the same new heart, that want to change the world for the better, and, and then be able with them uh, to look at your actions, uh, to get advice, uh, to learn from their mistakes, to learn from their successes. It's very, very important. If you want to exercise leadership, uh, find, go and find a good community uh, that, uh, that will help you doing this. I wish all of you uh, to, uh, to try uh, and to make the world a better place. I think it's important that we engage, uh, that, we, uh, that we try to improve the realities around us. Uh, and uh, that we leave the world slightly better that we encountered it as we as we were born.